All right, here's our call for today. A mysterious no cool. It is not cooling even though, well I've turned this off, but uh, even though it was running just fine when I got here and actually cooled the building down to 70. So I need to figure out what might have happened yesterday that is not happening today. And I'll probably start up there at the air handler. I'm looking up at the train air handler right now. You can see the where the coil is. It's a coil behind here. Oh, the TXV. Uh, there's no evidence that the coil is dirty, froze. No evidence of water in the pan uh, where you'd see a coil freeze. Like you come in one day and it's working fine, but the day before it was frozen and it wasn't working. That could be one of the explanations for what's going on. Uh, nice fancy blower. A little train plastic encasement there. Uh, a little condensation up here, but that's pretty normal. Uh, it has that metal wall right there and that cold air coming up against it. A lot of times there's condensation. I'll check inside the heater box here just to make sure that what we have is in good working order and not shorted out or anything like that. Or looked like it might have been shorted out at one time. Alright, I have the heater compartment opened up and what you see at the top here is the heater contactor. That blue and white wire you see on the side is a low voltage control circuit to the coil on the contactor. When that circuit tells that coil to pull in, the high voltage flows to the heater. Uh, you see the wire nuts right there, the gray and blue, that's the main uh, power to the unit coming in here and I think it's probably 10kW, uh, so just a single connection. Uh, you see some limit switches, that's where the heater coils are on the other side. So there's a little condensation in here but nothing that looks like it did any damage and nothing that looks out of the ordinary to me. So I think more than likely uh, it's the fact that this attic has no insulation, it was allowed to sit all day in the summer heat. So we tried to cool it down. It took way longer than they thought it was going to. That's what I think. But we're going to start the system up outside and make sure it runs properly. Uh, so this is probably just a working system. It wasn't working because it was hot, because there's no insulation, because it wasn't started up till midday. Uh, in the interest of being thorough, I'm looking inside the control box here on the train air handler, and uh, you have control transformers. And in the middle there, I know I had some questions about relays. This is a very popular relay everyone would recognize. 8-pin, uh, double pull, double throw relay. You have the control voltage down here on these two pins here. You have entry pins here, and they switch, normally open and normally closed. You can put your wires on either one that is appropriate for the situation you are in. And uh, one day I'll sit down with one of these that's not tied in so you can see it a little bit better. It's used in a lot of applications. It's been used for a long, long time. So it's still used up to 2008 in the train air handlers. Alright, the rated subcooling for this unit is 10 degrees. And what we have here is, uh, well, you can't see it anymore, but we had only a subcool down to 3 degrees at that pressure, which means we need a little bit more refrigerant. And I saw one of the Schraders was leaking this, so it was most likely that's the cause. Um, not very low in refrigerant, just a little bit. It's leaking around that shredder, and that train brass cap doesn't have any O-ring, so it's not going to help any if the shredder does leak. So that's what we're going to recharge and uh, stop that leak. Well, we were shooting for 10 degrees of subcooling, and we got 9.3, 9.2, 9.3. Close enough for me, brother. Uh, should be good to go. We'll uh, seal off the shredder ports with some uh, valve seal and our valve sealing caps, and we'll be good to go. I had some questions about relay, so I figured I'd address this one. This is a potential relay with a start capacitor. And how this is used is when the compressor kicks on, this start capacitor helps give it a boost right when it first gets started. And once it comes up to speed, it backfeeds electricity through the coil on this potential relay, opening the relay, taking the start capacitor out of the circuit. Therefore, it's only in there for, you know, a split second before it takes it back out again. And that, that is the purpose of that particular relay right there. You'll see them, uh, 521s, and that's what the terminal designations are. That's why uh, 521 compressor savers are called that. Uh, so that's just the story behind that. It's a very common one used. Uh, not all air conditioners have the star capacitor, but they really, to me, are a good uh, way to extend the life of your compressor. Uh, I think all of them should probably have it, especially some of them with the TXVs and things like that. But they don't always have that, uh, especially on the lower end products. But uh, it's a nice thing to have. Uh, it's one of
one of the reasons why nothing stops a train, because they put the parts in there they need. Uh, there's a defrost board. Uh, you see a little wiring harness for the low voltage connections. Uh, black wires here are uh, outdoor air sensor. The yellow wires next to it, defrost sensor. Uh, the black relay that tops for the outdoor fan for when the defrost uh, is energized. Cuts the outdoor fan off. Uh, there's our little LED light, tells us everything's okay or everything is not okay. Uh, the run capacitor for the outdoor fan motor. Run capacitor for the compressor. And uh, there's the contactor, which is nothing more than just another type of relay, energized by 24 volts, energizing the compressor and uh, the outdoor fan. And that's that. Uh, pressures look good. Just over 200 and around 61. Subcooling looks good. And we are good to go.